I'm going to continue uh, uh, in our study of the book of Acts. Uh, let's turn to Acts chapter 13. And Justin uh, stopped last week at Acts 13, verse 4. So I'm going to read uh, from verse 5 onward. And then when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogue of the Jews, and they had also John to their minister. And when they had gone through the isle unto Papos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar-Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elimus the sorcerer forestole his, his name by interpretation, which stood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Praise the Lord. So as Justin was speaking uh, last week, he stopped uh, or he spoke about how Paul and Barnabas, uh, Paul who was also known, uh, who was previously known as Saul, um, just uh, and he, his name was all along Paul, right? He didn't have a name change. Uh, so he was always called Paul. But from this point on, the uh, Bible only refers to him as Paul, not as Saul. So, uh, he, um, and so anyway, so I, I, I don't, I'm not going to go into the significance of that at this point, but my point is they were sent out by the church, the local church that they were part of, and it says they were sent forth by the Holy Ghost, or by the Holy Spirit led them, and this is the beginning of many missionary journeys by Paul. So Paul is launching, along with Barnabas, onto his first missionary journey, and they go to different places, um, and we'll, uh, in the coming weeks, hopefully we'll cover and discuss uh, the missionary journeys of Paul, which is what now, from now till the end of Acts, is the main theme of the book of Acts, is the missionary journeys, and then finally the, toward uh, him being on trial toward the end of the book. So, um, so anyways, as he's beginning his first missionary journey, he reached the first kind of significant place that's mentioned is the island of Paphos. And a sorcerer found him. And even though he was in a foreign place, uh, this was a Jew that was meeting him, it says. And he was a false prophet, a sorcerer, whose name was Bar-Jesus. So now this person, he was, he was because he was a sorcerer, and there was somebody with him uh, was the deputy of the place. His name was Sergius Paulos. He was interested in hearing the way of the, do the Lord, the doctrine of God. And uh, uh, Bar the sorcerer, uh, his name was also Elimus. And this Bar Jesus or Elimus was preventing Sergius Paulos from hearing the word of God. Okay? So... And then Paul struck him with um, blindness, and he couldn't see for a season. Okay, so what I want to talk to you today about is uh, start with kind of this incident and really talk to you about what uh, kind of the spiritual side of what this means. So Bar Jesus, the Jew, the sorcerer, the, his, maybe his given name means son of Jesus. 
His name is Son of Jesus. And his other, he was also known as Elimus, which uh, is basically means, it says, means sorcerer. Okay, so he had two personalities, which was Son of Jesus, but his true personality was that Elimus, that of a sorcerer. Okay, and he prevented, was trying to prevent somebody from knowing the gospel. Okay, so we see this conflict there that Paul resolved. So this, what, what I want to talk to you about today is about Bar Jesus and how he prevented knowing the way of the Lord. So it's almost like, um, this is uh, relevant to us, it's almost like this Bar Jesus was like a virus, was preventing Sergius Paulus, our spirit man, from receiving what? The oxygen or the way of the Lord. Okay? So stay with me for a second. I'll carry this analogy throughout. So, so Bar, Bar Jesus was preventing or stopping from uh, Sergius Paulus from knowing the way of the Lord. Okay, so I'll come back to that. But so what is this way of the Lord? Because Jesus himself in Matthew 7, 13 through 14 said, Enter ye in at the straight gate, or the narrow gate, for the wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So now Jesus is saying the way of the Lord right here. Okay, what it means to be on the way of the Lord. He is saying that the way of the Lord is narrow. The entrance is narrow, the road is narrow. And the way of destruction is broad, the entrance is broad. It's easy to go through. And it says many go through the broad way. And many go through that broad gate because, well, let's be honest here, if we're given between a two choices in our regular life, we always want to take the easy way, right? It's, we're, after all, just humans, right? We want to just take the easy way, which is natural. So Jesus is saying, but his way... You have to in choose to go through the narrow gate. He has to, we have to choose to stay on the narrow road. That means it's a road that was not easy. You had to push through. You had to push through the gate. You had to push through the road and stay on it until the end. So, but he's saying only a few find it. He didn't say only a few are on it. He said only a few find it. It's like when we're looking for, sometimes looking on the GPS, and we're trying to find this, and sometimes, you know, it might not be on the GPS, and there's a small, especially if you go to Kerala, right? I mean, sometimes the way is like, you know, somebody will give you direction, just go this way, this way, and then there's a small little thing, and we might miss it, right? Because it's a small little way, and, the, and one ambassador car barely fits through the road, right? You all with me? So sometimes you got to get out of the car, maybe you have to walk. So this is the way that Jesus is describing. is It's narrow. And the way is narrow. It's not easy. In fact, it's very, very difficult. And he is saying only a few will find it. So now we might think, you know, there's many layers to this. You know, we can look at this as preaching the gospel, right? You know, you preach the gospel and only a few will find Jesus through our preaching. But this also applies to us, uh, us who call ourselves Christian, right? Are we bar Jesus, son of Jesus, but really a lemus? Or are we allowing bar Jesus to be blind for a season, our fleshy man, so that Sergius Paulus, our spirit, might go stronger? Because we have, as we push through the narrow way. You all with me? So now the secret is, see, the, it's not about 
the way itself. You know, God didn't design this uh, obstacle course for us, right? Because the, the reason it's narrow is because Je the key is because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way. See, it's not that you're getting, taking a road to get to Jesus. No, the point is Jesus is the road. Jesus is the gate. Only a few will find him. See, we, so as we come to church and live out this Christian life, you know, m many of us come to him for different reasons, right? You know, we want answers to our problems. We want certain things, right? We want fellowship. All of those are fine. We make rules and regulations, all these man-made things that we follow, right? Maybe those are fine, but we forget it's about Jesus. Those things are useless unless it's about Jesus. Jesus himself is the way. And we have to strive to find Jesus every day of our life. You all with me? And we have to cause Elimus to be blind for a season. Just like Paul, we have to command Elimus to be blind so that Sergius Paulos may find, our spirit man may find the way of the Lord. You all with me? Can I hear an amen? All right. Thank you. Um, so let me give you an example. I really thought of it as Zach was sharing from the word on um, Friday at the English Bible study. And um, God showed me an angle to this as related to this. Um, in Exodus chapter 15, verse 23 to uh, 27. And when they came to Mara, they could not drink of the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree which he had cast into the waters. And the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance. And there he proved them and said, If thou wilt willingly diligent, uh, would diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healed thee. And then they came to Elim, where were twelve wells of water, and threescore and ten palms, and they encamped there by the waters. See, they had just gone through the uh, Red Sea. As it says in 1 Corinthians 10, they were all baptized in the Red Sea, right? So they were all just baptized into the Red Sea. They had just this uh, experienced this uh, enormous uh, moment of praise and worship, right? Miriam led songs, and they were all rejoicing and praising God. And then immediately... They were thirsting, it says in the previous verse, they found no water. And immediately they came to a place called Mara, and then now the, the water they found was bitter. So this, my dear brothers and sisters, is the way of the Lord. See, we have to examine ourselves. Is our attitude going from problem to problem? To, are we looking to God to solve our problems? Or are we living to walk this way of the Lord to find Jesus no matter what we're going through, right? Still come to God for strength in the midst of trouble. But I feel like we go from thing to thing because we're only looking for water. So the Israelites were looking for water, right? Their, their whole complaint was water, that I'm about to die. But the water that came out of the rock later in uh, Rephidim it says that rock that followed them was Christ. See, this water is bitter because the life in Christ is bitter many times. God has not promised us a broad way. He promised us a narrow way. And sometimes it's bitter. But when Moses pointed, God pointed Moses to the tree, which is the cross, that water was turned bitter. So it, it's not that the bitterness 
went away, it was sweet in their mouth. You all with me? That when you are crucified, as Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. And it is yet no longer I live, but Christ in me. The question is, is Christ living in you? Have you found this way? Have you pushed through the gate to find a way, the way of the Lord, which is Christ? It's not the way to Christ. We're not on this journey from problem to problem for seeking deliverance. God, solve my problem, help my family. They were not God. We didn't come to God to find water and complain like the Israelites. We came to God to find sweetness in the midst of bitterness. And that sweetness is being crucified with Christ. You all with me? Is this too hard? It's simple, really. When our desire is turned, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, the veil is upon the eyes of the Israelites because their heart was turned away from God. But when the heart is turned, the veil will be removed and we can see Jesus. This is what Justin was talking about last time. You know, when we come to worship Christ and Christ alone, then we say we don't have a problem giving tithe. We don't have a problem giving our life to Christ. God, here's my whole bank balance. Take it. It's all yours. And we're not like squeezing out 10%. We're not trying to squeeze out, you know, uh, a way to do things for God. We're not doing it out of guilt or obligation because the life I'm living, it's Christ living in me. It's Jesus. Let's not forget a year away. So it's, it's like, um, like over the past year, right? I mean, I, I am really glad to be worshiping together. I really enjoy the communion we have together. But don't get me wrong. Jesus was not absent from my life this last year. I wasn't, uh, you know, unhappy about not coming together because I didn't feel Jesus in my life. So that's what you had to ask yourself. Are you want, were you wanting to come back because that was your only communion with God? Right? If we're stranded on a remote island, will we still have Jesus with us? You all with me? So this is the question. Are you following this narrow way? Or are you on the way of destruction, which is broad and easy? Or are we pushing through the obstacles and finding... We're not... See, that, that's, why, see that's why the Israelites, when they came to Canaan to spy out the land, right? They, um, and they were, you know, uh, yeah, we all know the story. The ten of them, they saw the... Bla you know, the the, the blessings that can become from living in this promised land, from inheriting it. But they could not overcome the giants, or they were afraid of the giants. But Joshua and Caleb said, this is why God called us out. This is, this is the way of the Lord. This, no, even if I had to give my life for it, this is Jesus. I don't want anything else. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to live in this wilderness because this is, what, this is who I am. This promised land is Christ. Yes, in eternity we will be with him, but it starts here. Ephesians uh, uh, chapter 2 says we are seated in heavenly places already. He has seated us in heavenly places today. You all with me? Have you found Jesus now? Is Jesus with you now so um as you know i uh, i'm gonna share one more thing uh, as uh, i mean um, <laughs> uh, none of us has escaped the uh, you know what is happening in india i hope and the extreme distress and um and um suffering that people are going through right and and, and the, the primary thing that they're suffering is because of a lack of oxygen, right? And, and people are, you know, are running. I have even people in my uh, close friends who's, uh, you know, who, who was messaged saying, hey, you all know a way to get oxygen from my, my family. And, and you can't find oxygen anywhere. Um, and so, and people are suffering from that. Um, 
So, and this is what I, th I mean, obviously, and that's, I mean, I mean, and, you know, it's obviously a serious and terrible thing to lose your life. But if, have we thought of it this way when we think of our eternal life? Right? Do we treat church, my whole point is, do we treat church as a hospital? Are we coming here, is this the only time you get the oxygen? Is this the only time you find Christ? Because if we don't have the virus, which is Elimus, in us, then we don't need, the, uh, then the Elimus doesn't prevent us from getting oxygen. But if certain, we allow Elimus to be blind, and Sergius Paulos is growing stronger and stronger in the spirit, and he's becoming strong, then I don't, I, you know, whether I'm in church or away from church, I'm breathing oxygen freely because Christ is in me. I'm crucified with Christ, and Christ is living in me. And I'm communing with Him. My spirit is communing with Him. But if you are, are, are just dying because this is the only time you can breathe this oxygen, you run to and fro. Because if, uh, people uh, in the wilderness, they were crying for water. They were about to die. But the water they sought was not the living water. You all with me? Is this the only time you get the oxygen? Or are you freely breathing the oxygen that is Christ? No matter what is happening in our lives, no matter, you know, what can the virus do? The maximum we can do is kill us, right? Again, I'm not saying this, you know, in a very nonchalant way. It is a very serious thing. But, but we have to take our eternal life even more seriously. If, if we lose eternity, we've lost everything. So seek the oxygen. Put Elimus away. Uh, I'll invite the worship team to come, to, uh, come forward. Let Elimus be blind so that Sergius Paulos may grow stronger. Let our spirit may grow stronger because we, uh, Christ might grow stronger in me. That's what uh, Justin was talking about last time. You know, we want church to be so many things. We want church. Uh, it's like the Israelites complaining, oh, church is not I don't get anything from church. We run from message to message and things to thing, And it's because we can't find the oxygen. But if Christ is in me, I can commune with Christ wherever I am. I'm not seeking and complaining. I'm finding Christ and showing others to Christ. You all with me? And that was not pointed out to anybody. Um, but as we're coming back together, I want us to remind us that this is not a hospital. Far from it. This is a communion, an assembly of, of saints who are bought and redeemed by the blood of Christ, who was crucified with Christ, and Christ is everything to them, and they are on the way with Christ. And as Justin reminded last time, I was really touched by it because he said, when you're coming here to worship, you know, you, are you just praising or are you worshiping? But worship is not about singing songs, but are you, if you don't see Christ, and you surrender everything to Him. If you're not doing that, you're not really worshiping. So uh, why are we here? Let's all stand together for worship. Why are we here? And again, um, this is not... Um, this is from uh, over a year of introspection and taking stock of my own spiritual life. I'm able to share some of this. It's, you know, we're always seeking oxygen but we need to be breathing it freely. May his name be glorified.